Okay. All right. Ready? I need an oxygen tank. Welcome to Oddball. I'm Amino Hassan. That's Charlotte Wilder. We are in Miami. Getting excited for tonight's rivalry week game. Woo! Heat versus Celtics. We're going. We'll have tails tomorrow, I suppose. I'm, I'm going to make a joke before you do. The battle for Charlotte's heart. Oh, Just there. kidding. Whoa, I'm a Celtics see? fan. Dude, see? Yep. She I did it before he could do it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Why are you looking at me no, like that? Because it's, you're doing the thing where it's like, I'm going to joke about the thing that I really feel deep down I inside. I don't really feel it. Okay. I uh, don't really feel it. I go into uh, the heat arena and I'm like, ugh. Yeah. Uh huh. You, you wouldn't feel Except like, when the Celtics are there. Then I'm like, awesome. Well, we'll see that tonight. Also, we're going to play Bet the Show later oh, in the yeah. show. It's brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook and DraftKings Fantasy Sports app. So, DraftKings. Thank you, the DraftKings. The crown is yours. See? The I, crown I, is yours. That was all ad lib. I swear to God, I didn't even know I was going to do it. It's true. It's not written down. But I want to start with the avalanche of bullshit that's coming out of Milwaukee. Guys, <laughs> guys, I'm going to start with this statement. You don't have to bullshit us. You can just say, look, man, he wasn't getting it done. And that's it. But John Horst, Giannis Antetokounmpo, stop with the bull. Now, I know what you're thinking. Like, I mean, what happened? I, I'm not familiar. Charlotte, what should we start with? Let's start with Giannis. Let's start with Giannis. Giannis start with Giannis. Giannis is, is more straightforward. Giannis is, is straightforward bullshit. Straightforward John bullshit. John Horst did some mind pretzel bullshit. Giannis Antetokounmpo said the firing of first-year head coach Adrian Griffin caught him by surprise. I'm like, get the f*** out of here, bro. <laughs> what are you talking about? I, I got to trust the front office. I've got to trust the ownership group that they consider the bigger picture. <laughs> and then he says, I love the guy. I invited him to my wedding. I was coached by him, and we did very, 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 very well. When somebody's being hired, the GM might come and ask, what do you think about that? What do you think about this? Or whatever. Not just me. Players. People that he trusts their advice. But at times, they make it seem like it's the players that are making the decision. Okay. No. Yes. In this past offseason, mm -hmm. when they were interviewing Griffin, the last thing they did, he sat down with Giannis, Drew Holiday, and Chris Middleton. Obviously, Drew Holiday left. But that was like, we think we're going to hire this guy. What do you think? So, so Giannis... You do. You did interview him. Here's my thing. Like, I get what he's. Tr I guess he's yes. trying to say yes. what he's trying to say, which is we said it. Like, he didn't walk in a, uh, an office and say, "Get this mother out of here." Right. He didn't say that, right? But, dude, if I am by far the most influential person in the organization, and I walk in like, "Oh, this dude again," like, if my entire attitude is. I do not respond to this person. Guess what you're doing? Right. You're giving very clear input and advice to the front office that we don't want to play for this dude. Also, when you say in a press conference, we need to be better at coaching as a part. That's what, remember his equipment manager yep. speech when he was like from the, from everything to the equipment managers, but he was like coaching was a part of that. And that was the least, that was the least sort of forward thing. He said, imagine what's going on behind closed doors. It's just, we're, how are we supposed to believe that this was a surprise? This is from Wednesday. From our chemistry to the way we practice, our level of focus when we go out there, there's a lot of things that we could do better. Like, dog, you're talking, it's like, uh, two-man game with me and Dame Moore. Me and Chris to also connect more. Posting up Brooke. There's so many things. Brother. Like Giannis, you, my dude. Yeah, my, yeah, <laughs> and, and again, like I get it. You're not going in there and dictating, but you, you have to understand your role. They're, they're not just walking in there seeing you guys all thrilled and happy and saying, no, no, not good enough. Because again, this team wasn't 500. Right. They're the third best record in the league. How do you think the Bucks, the rest of the team took it? I think they're feeling amazing. Okay, so they're they're really pretty they're good. They're pretty great. They're really also, pretty the good fact that this came from the Bucks' official account the day the coach was fired is like, this how is, bad were things? You know, you know how what, bad was it? I, 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 was a social media guy like, oh, thank God, Charlie, poor girl. Poor there's girl. two different things that I jumped in my mind. Number one is it looks like the scene from the end of Return of the Jedi when the Ewoks are celebrating defeating the Empire. Two, it looks like the munchkins in Wizard <laughs> of Oz, ding dong, the witch is dead. 
Like, come on, guys. You just see a pair of Jordan, red Jordan sticking out from under the court. You remember the, the the series finale of Seinfeld where everyone was testifying in court and then they had the doctor who was like uh, George's wife's doctor when she passed away? Yes. And they said, how would you like how would you describe his reaction to finding out his wife, his fiance had passed away? And and uh, the, the 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 doctor said something like I would describe it as restrained jubilation. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it looked like right there. Oh my god. The other thing, Charlotte, and this is this is pretty priceless. This isn't Giannis, but this is I saw people responding to our video from yesterday saying, Oh, these millionaires, oh my gosh, like if you don't like it, you just powder it. I'm like, dude, if you were awesome at your job, but your manager was inept and the big boss comes in and said, What do you think? Are you telling me you're going to be like, he's great, boss? Oh, blah, blah, blah. Like, you're going to be like, yo, why is this dude the manager? Right. Make me the manager or get someone else or whatever. It's natural. If someone's not getting the job done and Adrian Griffin was not getting the job done and stop looking at wins and losses because, again, they weren't winning because of his coaching. They are winning because of the star employee. Right. And also, if you, the reason they're making that much money is because they are stars. Also, it's very hard to be an NBA player. I don't think people get, they're like, oh, they're paid so much. It's like, well, they're paid commensurate to their market value. And so you think that an NBA player is just going to be like, oh, well, I have a lot of money. So no, no, I actually no, no. You, don't you, care you, how I'm by coached. The way, it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, how dare I make all this money? I, I, it's too selfish. I should be grateful. I, no, not even I should be grateful. I, sh I should stop being selfish. And you're right. This is too much money. You know what? Take this money and give it back to the billionaire who paid me. The billionaire? We're all, oh, the poor billionaire. Oh, this guy's you skating away making millions off a billionaire. Shut up. But I digress <laughs> because there's another Shut larger up. piece of bullshit rolling down that mountainside. And it comes from one and only John Horst. Can I read it? Yes, please. So this, this is, set it up. Sorry, John Horst said this on Wednesday. John Horst is the GM of the Bucks. He said this on Wednesday. After Adrian Griffin has been had let been go. let go. Mm -hmm. They have parted. They have gone their separate ways. The journey was not for everyone. Uh -huh. and by everyone, I mean Adrian Griffin. This is not about players' comments, Horst said on Wednesday. This is not about things said or unsaid. This is my job. This is the organization's job at the top to evaluate every single day all areas of the organization and feel like whether we're getting or not getting the most we can out of the group. It feels like we could maximize the talent of this group better. We made a change. That's why we made it. Which, to be, to be fair, he's – no, he is lying. Sorry. Yeah. This yeah. is not about players' comments. Sorry. Oh, my bad. It, it is. It, 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 Do you it, think – why 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 – my question, I mean, uh -huh. why frame it this way? Why not say something innocuous or simple like, you know, it just it wasn't working? Is it because their record was so good people wouldn't believe it? Like, I don't uh, understand why everyone feels the need to twist this or say things that were, if you're someone who's been paying an iota of attention, you're like, that's just not true. I think there is a level of conflict avoidance mm. that seems rampant in the NBA right now among a certain generation of people. Really? Yeah. Like, there's a certain level of like, oh, I just went, oh. no, man, own it. Own it. I know we had a great record, but internally we felt that this wasn't going in the right direction. And maybe it's because he likes Adrian Griffin and he doesn't want to throw him under the bus and ruin his uh, coaching future. But you made a decision, stand by it. Don't yeah. be like... Don't wishy wash it or whatever, and definitely don't don't treat us like we're idiots. There are also ways to do it without, you know, saying Adrian Griffin's a bad coach and not lying. Well, even even like in, in case he was maybe he's trying to protect the players. No, no, this wasn't about the players' comments or whatever. Like you could say, it's not about an overt communication, but yeah. there are certain things that happen that lead you to the conclusion that this isn't working. Yeah. Right. And so it's not like, oh, the players said this, we got to fire them. But it's like, dog, it's not a good sign if the players are feeling this way very openly, let alone behind closed doors. But Charlotte, I defy you to find a bigger piece of bull from John Horst than what you just read. Uh, the thing about his dog? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So Ramona Shelburne, wonderful reporter, ESPN. Yes. 
She and Jamal Collier yes. uh, put together a story about what went wrong in Milwaukee. And, I mean, I was reading this last night, and I was like, this is one of the wildest leads to a story I've read in a long time, which mm-hmm. is that John Horst, mm-hmm. GM of the Bucks, yes. who started out in a lower position with the team. Sure. Adrian Griffin, who was a player, he was an assistant for the Bucks yes. years ago. They both lived in the same apartment complex, the same condo. Mm. And John. By and the his- way, John, shout out to being able to afford a condo with your starter. Yeah. <laughs> let me tell you something. Is man. the NBA hiring? Let me, let me I- tell you something. When I was entry level, man, there was, was no condo money. Well, he had one. Man. He also had a dog and a wife. Okay. Well, there you go. And they had a dog. And his name was Otis. And I quote John Horse when I say, like, for like, like a Otis day. Thorpe. Oh, okay. Well, he said Otis like the elevator corporation. Oh, this is something that he said to Ramona last fall when things were looking good. And uh-huh. He's talking about Adrian Griffin. Right. And he sees Adrian Griffin in the elevator. Mm-hmm. And it popped. He was like, you know what? Otis isn't the right name for this dog. This dog's name is Griff. Griffin. Sorry. This dog's full name. This dog's full name is Griffin Bear Horst. Uh, because... John Horst saw Adrian Griffin in an elevator. Fast forward however many years. We are now, yeah. last fall we were here, and uh, things were looking good, so this felt like a good time to tell the story. Also, what? Did, did, you named your dog after the guy you happened to hire as a head coach 15 years later? Why Why is that? Like, what? Is the dog still alive? I mean, that's the most shocking like, part of the story, as far as I can tell. Yes. It is? Oh. 15 years Wheaton Terrier. I thought I thought both Griff and Griff got the heave oh. on the same day. <laughs> hey, hey, John I Horse. I hope the dog's John okay. Horse, I, I hope the dog's okay. John Horse, I think you're remarkable at your job. I think you've done a great job stewarding the Milwaukee Bucks. But, brother, if you don't take that bull somewhere else... Please. And don't never tell a story like that ever again. If you name anything after anybody, don't bring it up at all. Maybe bring it up at like a championship parade. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. That's a time. Name them bud. Like, that's whatever. a time. Do not do that shit again. That, that, first of all, let me just say something. If someone named a dog after me, yeah. I'd be offended. Really? You named an animal after me? An oh. animal? You I don't. Name firstborn after me, I'll feel good. You name an animal after firstborn. me? Firstborn. Maybe third kid. No, firstborn. Show me you really love me. Okay. Because you ran into me in an elevator. I, I, I made I'm say, more pissed about that than me getting fired. How about that? <laughs> How about that? Can I say one thing? Mm-hmm. I don't think people realize that when you say the truth or when you own something, you don't have to say a lot. You can say a little. You can say a little as long as you're just not spewing stuff that everyone reading it is like, that's not true. People will respect it, even if it's uncomfortable. Just say it, get it over with, say it respectfully, and move on. Do you know what he sounds like? You remember, oh, man, I'm going out on a limb here. You remember an airplane? Yes. Where they find out that, like, yo, anyone who had, like, the fish is going to be sick. Now we know what we're up against. Every passenger on this plane who had fish for dinner will become violently ill in the next half hour. Yes. And so Leslie Nielsen is the doctor. He goes back to the back of the plane to tell everybody everything's okay. Like the pilots are fine. And the nose just keeps growing and growing and growing. <laughs> That's what John Horse with all of this bullshit coming out. Just, I just picture that nose growing and growing and growing and growing. And they're full, he's full to lead a, a, a no, he's a free to leave a full and fulfilling life or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, like you said, man, just own the shit and then move on. We, you don't have to keep Surely talk- there must be. A better way to do this. I am serious. Don't call me Shirley. And don't call me Shirley. (laughs) All right. So, happiness in Milwaukee to, I won't say sadness in Miami, but, like, definitely not the debut you wanted. What would you say? Fatigue? Bum, bum, bummed out a little bit? I just, annoyed, frustrated? It, annoyed, frustrated. I Because it's, it's first of all, it's not about Terry Rozier. Yeah, sorry. Set the yeah. scene. Terry so, Rozier gets traded. Gets traded to Miami. And yesterday was his first game. He came off the bench. And they lost to a Grizzlies team that I would defy anyone to name six players from. Four players from. Can you do it? That's a challenge to the folks uh, at home. Pause yeah. it. Try it. Pa- yeah. Look up the roster. <laughs> Like, and, and no, Ja, no, Brandon Clark, no, Steven. I'm talking about the people who actually played. It was remarkable. I'll give you a hint. Scotty Pippen Jr. was on the Grizzlies. So like, that. that's, yes. Wait, sorry, what? Yeah, Scotty Pippen Jr. played, and he played well last night. So, but anyways, 
the Grizzlies got up big, and then the Heat all of a sudden came alive in the fourth quarter and cut it to two, and then the Grizzlies shut them down after that with a 7-0 run. Um, frustration for sure. I remember sitting and turning to the person next to me and saying, even if the Heat could beat this, uh, come back and win the game, they didn't deserve to win this game. They, mm. they did not, res- quote-unquote, respect the game. What was the biggest problem as your concern? Because obviously you bring someone new in, yeah. it changes things, takes a second. Was that not what was going on here? Was there a bigger issue than just Terry Rozier is suddenly on the team? Yeah. I the, the, Okay, so from what I saw, it, it, it had nothing to do with Terry Rozier. Offensively, they're incredibly stagnant. Nobody was moving. Tyler Hero is overcomplicating everything. I know people are going to look at his stat line. He's always shot the ball well. Like, he over-dribbled himself in a situation so many times. Yeah. And this Miami Heat team plays best when they are making mistake-free basketball. The decision-making is elite. I've said this a million times. I've said it last year, much to the chagrin of a lot of people in Miami. I said, they don't have the talent to just go out there and play. They have to execute. Boston has the talent to just go out there and play. You got someone like Jason Tatum. Things break down. It's like, he'll save us. I don't think Miami's good enough to be like, ah, we'll figure it out. They have to be executing. Mm-hmm. And when they don't execute, it doesn't look pretty. And last night, it did not look pretty from that standpoint. The other thing was they – I don't know if you want to say Memphis shot uncommonly well from three, but there was a lot of um, reticence to close out is what I would say. Okay. The closeouts weren't crisp. Defensively, this team has a ways to go, and that's the, that's the part of it they're supposed to be already good at. Right. right? That's why I was harping so much last yesterday's show about they need to get better defensively. Like, don't just hang your hat on that. Like, oh, it's good. Let's just work on the offense. They need to get better defensively. But Terry said it best. We know things are not going to be perfect right away. You see the assessment of the team and how things are going, but I feel like I fit heat culture, and I'm coming right in the pickup on things on the defensive side and let everything else take care of itself. I love that. I saw that quote and I was like, do you think he, I feel like he probably just knew to say that. Like, I feel like I fit heat culture. Or do you think someone was like, hey. No, no, no. No, hey. he, knew to, he knew to say He knew. He, he knew because we know he wanted to be here. Yeah. The, the reports had already come out prior to him getting traded. It was like, Terry Rozier wants to be in Miami. So he lives in Miami. He, like His off-season home is in Miami. He's not unfamiliar to any of this so absolutely that's a i think a legitimate sincere quote and not i just love when people say it i fit i fit heat culture and like without any hint of irony yeah see and i don't love heat culture soon you'll be i love when they say it because I yeah. think it's funny. She lo- so let's get this straight. She loves when they say it. She loves the jersey. I she love loves- when they say it because it's ridiculous. The They're she all just the like, oh, heat culture. Yeah, we buy it. It's like. Yeah. What's what's more ridiculous, heat culture or the town? Okay, well, that's a Joe Missoula thing. That's not a Celtics thing. It's Yeah, it's it's an eminently forgettable movie. Oh. M- maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. Yeah, he's got it. He- yeah. Uh, elsewhere in the not feeling so great, Luka Doncic. Yeah. He got heckled. He yeah. got a heckler ejected. He got a heckler ejected. Because the heckler said, like, get on the treadmill? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. What people need to understand is typically. I'm not, I'm not, yes. No, typically it's like that's not the thing. It's like 8 million things said before it, right? And probably many of which was not as innocuous as get on the treadmill, fat boy. Right. But it's like when that's what gets you ejected, like there's a feeling like, I didn't even say anything. I didn't even do nothing. But like I, it's, I've, I've witnessed this with my kids, mm-hmm. like the whole idea of like, I didn't even say I didn't do anything. I'm like, you just hit your like sibling with a, a shovel. Like, what are you talking about? I was like, yeah, but all I said was oops. Like, that doesn't make it any better. That's not the thing. Yeah, the- I, I do want to say, I mean, you know how yesterday we were talking, I was like, I'd be very good at being pesky on defense and the locker room. Yeah. That would, I would also get unbelievably frustrated and angry at hecklers. Hecklers? They really? would they, Like someone in the crowd doing that repeatedly, if I heard it that clearly that long, I would flip. You know what's funny? So I get it, Luke. The funniest thing is this was a home game for the Mavs. I know. That's not a great, like, yo. He the, went to the Mavs director of the stands or yeah, whatever. The director and was like, of the you, stands. The director of the, the band leader. <laughs> My name is Stanley, Stanley Stanson, and I'm the director of the stands. You really would react to hecklers? Yeah. 
if it was that incessant and it was you that know, close to you. You know what? I, here's the funny thing. This is this is going to say a lot about me. Hecklers, I've never even paid any mind to. It was like, what, like, it's probably more annoying to the people around them than it is anyone on the court. Yeah. But the one thing I can't stand, you go to an NBA game early enough, the guys come out, they get some shots up, they work, they do, go, do their work, and then go back in the locker room, right? And inevitably, there's always some little kids that are either courtside or, like, very close to the tunnel or whatever, and they want an autograph or, or a picture with them or whatever. But it's like they yell at the guy in the middle of his work. Like, the guys are going through, ripping, picking rolls, and, and Jason, step back. And, Jason! 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 Or even worse, when it's like they're saying the last name, Doncic! 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 And he's like, kid, relax. When he gets done, then you go nuts. And I don't blame the kids, because kids are excited. But I blame the parents or the, the guardians who are like, yo, I'm going to let my stupid-ass kid just bother this guy, <laughs> particularly when you're sitting courtside, where it's not like a few rows back. You're right there. And I see some other kids are trying to reach out, like, no, 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 no. You wait. Also, He's working, and then oh when he's God, done. Oh, my God, I just drooled on myself. What, what I'm is? a giant baby. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Am I okay? I don't know. There was sincere concern in Charlotte's voice. Am I okay? Oh my god! Oh my god! Like in the movies. Have I ever have it? When someone gets like a like the the incurable like zombie disease. Like yeah, I know. Oh it god. just like starts okay? spitting on themselves. Did I drool? Like, on like myself? Charlotte, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Take me before it spreads. Yeah. Okay. Um. But what I was gonna say is, that if they're sitting courtside, they're rich enough to be sitting there, which means they're already entitled. Which means yeah. Get a grip. Okay. Get a grip, kids. All right. Get a grip, Charlotte. Let's bet the show. It's Thursday. That means it's time to bet the show. Bet the show is presented by DraftKings Fantasy Sports. Check out what DraftKings has to offer this season with code oddball. Mm. Because life's more fun when you're in on the action. DraftKings. The crown is yours. There you go. All right. So we got three bets. Yep. You got to take one of these bets, Charlotte. Okay. You got to pick one. Two of these bets you can actually bet on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Okay. All right. So, bet number one. Mm -hmm. The bet is Doc Rivers will lead the Bucks to the Eastern Conference Finals. Right? Okay. What's so, the wager? The wager is are you willing to bet a cold plunge? If you win, you don't have to do a cold plunge and can instead skip that cold crap and opt for a warm and cozy oddball robe. Wow. If you lose, you have to do a cold plunge for the show. Bet number two, the winner of tonight's rivalry game between the Celtics and the Heat will make it to the NBA Finals. So, again, the bet you would put on the DraftKings Sportsbook app is Celtics to the Finals or Heat to the Finals, depending on what your answer is. Okay. The wager, are you willing to bet a ticket to, the show, to a show at the Sphere in Las Vegas? If you win, you get to experience the Sphere in all of its glory. If you lose, you'll have to dribble a basketball around the entire Sphere during Summer League, remember, it's going to be hot as f All right, bet number three. And one or more of the Bulls players will be wearing a Laker jersey. The wager, are you willing to bet holding a sign outside of Gamebridge Fieldhouse during All-Star Weekend demanding a Reggie Miller statue be placed there? If you win, you don't have to do that, and instead you'll have a member of the shipping container hold a sign demanding a statue of you be placed outside of the Caseya Center. I don't know how they got dragged into this. <laughs> if you lose, grab your finest Reggie Miller jersey and bundle up. Protest sign will be provided. You're welcome. So, okay. So the three bets, real quick. Doc Rivers is going to take the Bucks to the conference finals. The winner of tonight's rivalry game between the Celtics and Heat will make it to the NBA finals, meaning your, your conference finals is going to be one or the other, mm -hmm. right? And some Bulls will be Lakers before the trade deadline. Can you go first? Oh, I mean, this is a really tough one. Because uh, I, I already took, I already said the Pacers <clears throat> would make the Eastern Conference finals, but now I feel like Bucks. Celtics feels more likely than Pacers Celtics because I'm not contrary to popular belief saying that the Heat will get there. Uh, I do not think they will. You know what? I'm going to take that one. I'm going to bump the Pacers. Actually, no. I don't know. I hate this. Yeah. <laughs> I hate making decisions and predictions. Gambling? I don't know. I don't know what the heck is going to happen. <gasps> Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. <laughs> Age and eligibility restrictions apply. Void where prohibited. See DraftKings.com for details.
places a mean hates? Cleveland, Utah, Oklahoma City. I don't, I don't hate Utah. Throw in Chicago. Chicago? Boston too, don't like Boston. Well, 